This is the World Organic News, the week ending 17th of April 2017. John Moore reporting. I'd like to start this week with a big thank you to Honey Bunny 73 from Gypsy Homestead. You may recall I quoted from this blog last episode and received a delightful comment on the about page of the blog. Thank you, Honey Bunny 73. I was touched by your kind words. And yes, we are saving the world one cabbage at a time. Now to this week's stories. We have a post from Muddy Waters Coffee Company entitled The Benefits of Drinking Organic Coffee. Now this podcast and the blog, to be honest, are fueled by copious amounts of coffee. So it's always great to find some bias confirmation. The post offers four benefits of organic coffee. One, chemical free. Two, it's nutritious. Three, it tastes better. And four, it's healthy. Seems fair enough to me. Now on to a more serious matter. This episode is being released on the 24th of April, the eve of Anzac Day, the day that we here in Australia and New Zealand remember our war fallen. There is a link in the show notes explaining Anzac Day. And so we have a post entitled How I Went from Tormented Veteran to Peaceful Homesteader from the blog Pointer Pooch Homestead. The author gives a brief explanation of how he was affected by war, how half an hour in a bunker changed his life, and not for the good. And I quote, long quote, I sank into depression and the torment of feeling useless and ashamed. Then, more than anything, I wanted to revisit my childhood and get lost in the innocence that was there. I began to yearn the smell of wet earth. I began craving the feeling of earth on my bare feet. I wanted to be in the silence that follows a storm. I wanted to watch rain drip off verdant leaves. I wanted to feel the dampness come off a field of vegetables. I wanted to smell the spiciness of tomato leaves. Above all other things, I wanted to watch things grow. I started small with a couple of plants, a few corn stalks and a few tomato plants. Most walk-in closets have more space than my first garden did. I planted the seeds directly in the ground. I decided that even though I knew it would be easier to start them indoors, I liked the idea of the seed going into the ground. When my first tomato plant popped its little jagged leaves out for the first time, I was hooked. But it was more than simple pride in mastery over nature. It was more than a feeling of anticipation of harvesting my own tomatoes. I felt in control of something. I was responsible for something. I felt connected to something. I felt connected to the earth. I was growing my own nourishment. I was tending the very thing that was keeping me alive. Food. End quote. And our author was away, turning his life around. I'll leave the rest of the post for you to read. The main thing I got from this post was the return of wonder through growing food. It is a thing of joy and excitement to me too whenever a seed thrusts through the soil into the light. That such a process is also healing for many is no surprise. Now let's turn to more mundane matters. From the blog Royal Crest Farm comes the post, Why Mulch? Why indeed. There are many reasons to mulch, the primary being biomimicry. To put that another way, if mulching is good for nature, it's probably good enough for all of us. The post, however, provides the following reasons for mulching. 1. Weed control. 2. Moisture retention. 3. Prevent soil erosion. 4. Maintain soil nutrients. 5. Controls pests. and 6. Polishes up the look of the garden. All but 6 polishes up the look of the garden, is a confirmation of why mulch is a part of natural systems. Now to a post about the organic farm at Oakland University. The farm started by Dr Faye Hansen, whose voice will be the first one you hear talking about the setup of the farm. It started in uh, 2009 and there were a group of students, uh, sort of three different factors, different clubs came together to ask OU to if they could start a garden. And so we paired up and put together a proposal which was finally honored in 2009 and they, OU selected this site, um, which at first it seemed a little far away, but we really love it. It was a blessing to be out here, we could grow. The farm is a full production outfit, from propagation of seeds through to planting out, growing and harvest. Dr Hanson believes one of the benefits of campus and K-12 gardens is the reconnection with food it provides our students. I think um, 
campus farms uh, or even uh, farms and gardens in uh, K through 12 are really important because we've gotten so disconnected from our food system that you you know students we've had students out here that helped harvest potatoes um, that had no idea where a potato came from. Wow, I never knew that potatoes grew under the ground, you know. So I think that's a big thing. There's an example of an interdisciplinary project with some students from the engineering faculty, which is worth a look. The engineers, this is the first time we've had a project from engineering out here. We've had various projects from different uh, groups, um, but these engineers are actually doing a capstone project. Uh, seniors, it's an interdisciplinary team of various flavors of engineering, and um, they had an interest in doing something related to sustainable farming. So we talked about some projects, and um, they actually came in, in with an idea about irrigation. And it's been great working with them. They have uh, designed a whole system that you know we can have it at the end and be collecting data from it. There is good work being done at OU. I recommend you check out the entire 10 minute video. It is well worth your time. And that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. If you've liked what you've heard, please tell everyone you know any way you can. I'd also really appreciate a review on iTunes or the podcatcher of your choice. This may or may not help others to find us, but it gives this podcaster an enormous thrill. Thanks in advance. Any suggestions, feedback or criticism of the podcast or blog are most welcome. Email me at podcast at worldorganicnews.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back in a week.